Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. This video is sponsored by Clip Studio Paint, a great software for drawing, painting and also for animation. Today I want to show you a good and beginner friendly way to get into some animation without it being overwhelmingly technical. Clip Studio is a perfect software for creating 2D animations in. You can both create your animated elements as well as paint your backgrounds all in the same place. To begin with here I set my canvas resolution to 4K and started sketching some thumbnails of what I wanted to feature in my scene. I love painting vegetation so I thought it would be cool to create a shot that was focusing on a small sort of fairy miniature character surrounded by large leaves and flowers. I used quite a textured brush that came natively with Clip Studio for this initial sketch. I worked on getting the character's pose to a place where I liked it. Sometimes it takes a few iterations before I like what I see and lowering the opacity of the layer I just drew on and then working on top of a new layer helps to refine the shapes and clean things up. So doing that a few times often go a long way. I try to define some of the leaf shapes in the foreground a bit with the same brush to get a good idea of the composition I wanted. At this stage I don't worry too much about making things perfect or drawing the exact elements. It's more an exploration phase where I might capture the overall vibe. When I later start to paint with colors I can really nail down things and get each element rendered. I went over the character sketch one more time before starting the painting process of the background. I wanted to make sure that she had a good enough design before committing to the background painting. Something that I later struggled with when I started to paint was that I did not have a clear idea of how I wanted my lighting to look. I think that it can be okay to just start to paint and see where it takes you, but more often than not it means a lot of troubleshooting down the line instead, which often takes longer than if one had just done a bit of planning to begin with. I feel like even in the early stage where the first colors are put on the canvas, it's helpful to have the lighting in mind. Uh, and make that come across even though no details are defined yet. I ended up spending quite some time on this painting here, getting a lot of details in. But this is completely style dependent. Some of you might create your backgrounds in a more graphical style or maybe keep a tight line drawing showing through. You know, many productions in animation often focus on finding ways to save time as a lot of backgrounds and characters have to be drawn. So it can be clever to keep things a bit simpler if you are planning to make a longer animation project. The style I often gravitate towards is for me quite time consuming to create, so I might not have the most streamlined pipeline, but I do like the end result, so yeah, it's a give and take. I painted this with quite standard brushes. I found some default ones that I liked and slightly modified some of them to get the right amount of texture that I'm after. You can just make a copy of the brushes that come natively with Clip Studio and then modify them if you want to and keep both the original and the new one. You can also create some of your own brushes from scratch or you can download some from their large library. I try to vary the colors of green of the different foreground plants here to keep it from being overly monochromatic. The tree stump got a more red tone to separate it and then for the background I try to push it towards a cooler bluish color to complement the green and the red in the foreground. I played around with various ways to paint the far background. At one point I tried a blue sky with white clouds approach. Um, but I didn't think it fitted with my original vibe. I preferred it to be in a forest somewhere and I like the fact that the background tree elements could frame the main character. 
by having the brightest spot of the image right behind her, she would stand out the most. I have not painted that much in Clip Studio before, so it was a fun challenge to try a new software and change things up a bit. Not always use the same tool over and over. Now that the background is finished, it's time to give the character some animations. If you have a bit of experience with illustration, but might be new to animation, I think this can be a nice way to begin exploring it. I will not be animating the full character in this shot, but only some elements of her. Let's imagine there's a slight wind going through the scene. We can put some motion to her dress and to her hair for example. By making those animations loop, we end up with a forever running animation as well. And I think a simpler animation like that can be quite a fun way to elevate an illustration. It's also slightly more approachable if you are a beginner. The dress and the hair will both be driven by the wind, so they will need to be moving in a wave-like fashion. There are plenty of tutorials on how the timeline in Clip Studio works, but here I am simply using an animation folder and my timeline is set to 24 frames per second. For the dress, I started with a few keyframes to space out how the wave moves through the cloth. As the dress is blowing in one direction, and since it's touching her leg on the right side of the frame here, I want the wave to start small and get larger the more it travels through the fabric. The looser the fabric gets, the more it will distort. By choosing a specific frame amount um, for the entire loop, I can start dividing it into keyframes to animate it in sections rather than chronologically one frame at a time. By dividing it down and animating some key movements to begin with, I can make sure I get a constant speed throughout the full animation. So I started by drawing two keyframes, that would be the first frame and the middle frame of the animation. I then created two in-between keyframes between those two frames, and using the onion skin I could see where my new drawings should go. By adding the first frame also at the very end of the animation, I could make sure it transitions back to the beginning and creates a full loop. Clip Studio has this handy tool called Specify Cells, which allows you to keep one frame in multiple locations on the timeline. By editing it, it will also update the other frames that use the same one. That's what I used for this last reference frame. I eventually realized I had not spaced my frames in a way that I could keep dividing them and add in in-betweens, so I had to rearrange the timing slightly to fit a full number that allowed for that. The final loop ended up with 16 frames, which is an easy number to divide up. I animated on ones here, meaning one drawing for each frame in a 24 frames per second timeline. For the hair animation, I started in a very similar way, splitting the 16 frame timeline into two keyframes, covering eight frames each. Instead of drawing the hair straight away, I animated the wave running through a single line to use as a reference. Just as before, I kept dividing the timeline into more and more frames as I filled them in with drawings. When this wavy line was animated, I made a copy of the entire animation folder, 
moved it up to the top of her head and offset it with one frame. This other line will act as a guide for the separate hair strands above, and by offsetting them I get a slightly more organic move to her whole hair. In a new animation folder I began animating the final hair shape. I could then just use these reference lines and kind of steer my hair shape to follow them. I could draw all the static parts of the character on a normal layer to not have to repeat that part for each frame. That includes the face, the upper body and the legs. Clip Studio got this cool feature which allows you to record a time lapse of the process as you're working. This can be a great way to capture your process if perhaps you want to share it somewhere. It's always fun to see the steps that artists take, so to have a time lapse of all your decisions and explorations you went through on a painting or animation is a really cool feature. All you do is to enable this time lapse feature in the file menu. When your painting is done, you can export it as a video from the same place. If you are starting out with animation, you could try a similar approach. Try adding a slight bit of animation to your artwork. I spent quite a long time on the background here, but you could obviously apply this to any form of illustration style. So go with whatever you are comfortable with. It could be like here, a bit of wind in the character's hair maybe, or maybe I could have animated some simple insects flying around her. Whatever your subject matter is, try adding a small element of animation to it as a way of practicing. This is the final animation that I created. If you like this video, then give this video a thumbs up below and let me know in the comments if you've done anything similar and in case you have, what it was. I would be happy to hear what you guys have created. Thanks to Clip Studio for sponsoring this video, a fantastic and very affordable software. I highly recommend you check it out, so links are in the description. Feel free to subscribe to my channel here for more videos. Big thanks to my Patreon crew for being awesome. Join me there if you want to see more in-depth videos. Stay healthy and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.